Hey, welcome back guys. So for this video, we're going to be going through enemies and hazards such as spikes. Uh, we're going to do a pathfinding feature. So we'll have an enemy that will travel back and forth from two different points. However, when he also enters your line of sight, or should I say when you enter the enemy's line of sight, he will then charge towards you. So anyways, before we get into this, I just want to say I've just updated the tile set to fix an issue where the tiles were bleeding into each other so the edges would be overlapping so go download that and then once we once you've done that we can continue and what we're going to do is we're just going to head over to the top right and we're just going to increase the size of this so that we can we have more space to work with so i'm just going to for the sake of this i will just do maybe 3000 by i think 5000 will do Oops, I've got, that, I've got the wrong way around. So we'll do 5,000 by 3,000. That's a bit better. Okay, so what I'm then going to do is, if you select the tile set, you can just drag this out and just, this doesn't matter, you can just drag this how you want, you can just fill this out here. And then what we need to also do is, if you select the player character, we want to head over to behaviors and we need to search scroll to. Now what this does is this is just going to allow the camera or the game itself to follow the character. So as you're moving across the screen, that will now happen. Whereas before it would have just stayed fixed in one place. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're now just going to paint out this map and just get it looking a little nicer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just painting out some tiles. So what you do is just head over to the tile set. Now use the pencil tool. And just draw out a nice and a simple path. So you can also drag as well. So that we could also just drag these like this. We can do this. We can click here. Now I'll pause here for a second. And I just want to. So I'll recommend just spending a bit of time now. If you pause the video. And just have fun creating your levels. So really get used to using the tile map. And just try and draw a single, a simple level. And just keep in mind. So. We're going to be adding a couple of different enemies in this one and some spikes. So what I would do is, or what I'm going to do myself is just try and have an area where you can have an enemy to go back and forth. So for example, if you had a little gap like this, we just need a space where you have two different points. where We're going to have two different sprites where the enemy is going to go back and forth like so. So make sure you have a, po a place for that. And then maybe try and add a couple extra areas where you could have some things such as spikes or maybe some floating platforms. And so I'm going to now, I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll speed this up and then I will see you when we're finished. All right, guys. So I've just very quickly put this together here. Um, we still might change it in the future. I just wanted to get a little area. So we've got an area here where we can have our enemy. Uh, we'll have so we'll have little spots for some spikes and things like that. And yeah, this will this will do for now. And so once you're happy with uh, your your level, uh, we're good to, we're good to continue. So the first thing that I'll do is we'll just quickly go through adding adding a spike because that that's dead simple, and uh, it's it's great just to fill in your level with all these little hazards and things like that. So we'll just go insert a new object. Once again, we're going to use a sprite, and then we're going to head over to the game asset pack. We want to go to hazards. I'm going to choose this larger spike back here. And then what we want to do is we want to head over to this collision polygon here, and we just want to make sure that we're happy with the, the size. So I'm just going to delete these two bits, and I'm just going to, just to give a bit of a, a bit of leeway, we can just make it so it's not too difficult. Just like that. Okay, so let's name this to Spike. And I'm just going to place this right here. Make sure it's on the main layer. So once we've done this, let's just head over to the event sheet. And we could make a new group if we want. So we could do a new group and we could call that Hazards. And then maybe if you wanted to change the colour, you could make that more a red. 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to go character on collision with another object and then so we'll make that the spike so when the character collides with the spike and then what we, so what we can do is so if you remember in the previous episode we already did a little bit an, an example on how to do damage so we already have this here with here so what we can do is we can just we could just copy these two right here although we don't even need this text one now anymore that was just more for an example so unless you want to keep the text eventually we'll, we'll add some kind of more of a an actual ui where you know maybe we'll have like a health bar or something like that but what we can do is we can just we can copy this and so we can make it so that when the character collides with a spike it will subtract 50 health and again unless you would like if, if you want to make it so that simply if you hit the spikes you die you can just keep you can make that 100 and then so on top of this whilst we're in here let's make it so that when your health does hit zero that's game over so what we can do is we can go so we can go add a new event and we can go character and we can compare instance variables health and what we want to do is we want to go if the health is equal or less than so where's it there we go so less or equal to and again so the reason why I want less or equal to is because let's say you you only had 20 health left and then you lost 50 it could then go into minus so that's, that just stops it from kind of bypassing that so we're gonna go if it's less or equal to zero and then we want to end the layout or we can just restart the layout so we go system restart layout and that's just a more simple way of doing this so that's how you would do subtracting and things like that but again for this example what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using the set value just to keep it nice and simple so we will just make it set to zero and then now if we test this if the character was to land on the spike it restarts the layout like so okay great next let's move on to the enemies so that's where it gets a bit more interesting so i'm going to use this damage example that we already started with in the last episode so we can just rename this to enemy or i'll, I'll rename it to enemy one i'm going to set its size to 125 225 now in the next in the near future i'll i will create an enemy asset as well and i'll do a quick tutorial on how to create that and then i'll also include that in a pack so then for now we'll just just to, for the sake of time we will just use a red we'll use the red square for now keeps it simple and then what we're going to do is we also need to create two two additional sprites so that the enemy so what we want to do is we want to make it so that when the enemy is traveling it hits one of those sprites once it hits that we want to flip the enemy and make it then travel to the next sprite when it hits that one then go back the other way so insert a new object we're going to add a sprite and then we just want to make this any color you like or make it purple like so and I'm just gonna make this thin and I just want my sprite to just stop about here so I'm gonna name, name this to enemy point one and then we can right click and we can clone this so this is now enemy point two and I'll actually just so I know We can just quickly draw on these just so you know like so and then for the enemy we also so we want to start adding some more behaviors just now so we already have the solid behavior and then what we want to do is although before we do that actually it's important to make sure that so if we select these two here we just want to make sure initially visible is turned off so we can't see these when we're playing the game and then back to the enemy we want to add a move to your behavior and then if we just go to the event sheet we can again add a new group call it enemies 
and then we can go to enemy one and we can say on collision with another object point one and we want to add an action enemy one and then we want to set move to object and we're going to then move to enemy point two and we want that direct and then we can just copy and paste this and then we can just change this to enemy point two and then we will then move to back to enemy point one so on collision with any enemy point one we're then going to move to point two and then vice versa if it hits point two then it'll go back to point one and now real quick just before we can test this we also need to head over to behaviors again and we need to add the platform behavior now what we also need to do is just make sure we scroll down and we want to disable the default controls okay then we just need to head over to on start of layout we're going to select enemy one and then we want to once again we want to set it to move to object and then we're just setting the initial movement on the start of the layout so we want that to move to enemy point one click ok and so now on the start of the layout the enemy is going to be moving to the first point and then once it hits that first point it's then going to move to the second point and then it's going to keep going back and forth like so don't need that okay great let's test this okay so now as we can see the enemy is now moving back and forth now one thing we do need to do is we need to just head over here and we just need to d disable set angle on the move to behavior and then you can play around with this so this, in, in move to here this is where you can change the speed and the acceleration so we can make it faster or slow and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this enemy and I just want to I'm just going to delete this for now I just want to show a different type of enemy so what we could do is we could also create one where once you're in the line of sight of that enemy it will start charging towards you let's make sure it's on the main layer let's head over here and we can say so we're, now we're going to go we'll go enemy 2 and actually before we do this we need to go head back and we need to head over to behaviors again and we need to add a line of sight behavior so we go back to the event sheet and now we can we can say enemy 2 has line of sight to object and then we're going to set character and then we can copy this up here and paste this in so when the enemy has line of sight of the character we're then going to move it in the direction of the character and then just set this to enemy 2 test this okay great so as you can see this enemy is now following us okay and then just to show you so if you select this enemy enemy 2 and we scroll down here on line of sight this is where we can decide whether or not we want certain items to block its line of sight as well as set up its rate of view and the range Okay, great. So one last thing we'll go through is we want to make it so that when you hit the enemy, they it will they will disappear. Let's head over to the event code, to the event sheet, sorry. And then what we will do is we will add an event, and we will say sword on collision with another object, enemy one. So on collision with enemy one, and then we can just we can just make it so enemy one, and we'll just make it for now. We'll just make it so that you destroy them. And then we can duplicate this with enemy 2. Now the issue here is we, we are coming close to the number of event sheets for the free version. And now what I might have to do is going back and forth, I might have to just remove some things. Or we'll, 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 we'll cut it down to just one enemy. And then I'll just have to look into this after this video and just see what we can add. And then what we also need to do is we need to right click on this and we need to add another condition. And then what we want to do is we want to go to the sword and we want to go is playing animation attack. So now this will only happen when 
the attack animation is playing. So when you hit the enemy, if the attack animation is playing, so when you're swinging, then it will destroy the enemy. Just need to double change this as well. So make sure this one also is an enemy too. So let's test this. Okay, great. So now we've got two enemy types and when we hit them, it destroys them. And then just like in the previous video, we could also add a quick particle effect as well when you hit those. So we could just head over here. We can clone the object type. I'll just do this for now. Do this however you like. Make it red or something. We can just rename this to enemy particle. And then we can go down here and we can just enemy one, spawn another object, enemy particle, we'll just test this one more time. Okay, great. Okay, so that's it for this episode guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this was easy enough to follow along. I'm still getting over from being a bit under the weather. But yeah, take care guys and I'll see you in the next one.